Hi, I'm Gabriel Peterson, a developer evangelist at ARM. In this video, I'll guide you through a learning path by David Brisky that teaches you how to create computer vision applications using OpenCV on Android devices. By the end of this learning path, you'll be able to describe OpenCV, add OpenCV support to a project, and process images using OpenCV. This will also prepare you for David's next learning path in the series on using OpenCV for face detection on Android devices. The only prerequisites are a computer where you can install Android Studio and an Android smartphone. OpenCV, short for Open Source Computer Vision Library, is, as the acronym suggests, an open source computer vision and machine learning software library. It contains over 2,500 optimized algorithms for tasks like image processing, object detection, feature detection and matching, machine learning, video analysis, and 3D vision. Additionally, it's cross-platform, providing platform-specific build configurations and dependencies, allowing us to use it on ARM-based mobile devices. In this learning path, we will create and configure the project to use OpenCV, access the smartphone's camera, retrieve camera frames with OpenCV, and process the images using OpenCV. First, download and install Android Studio if you haven't already. You can find it at developer.android.com studio. Once installed, open it and click New Project in the center of the page. Select the Empty Views Activity template and click Next. Name the project arm64.opencv.camera. Leave the package name as its default. Choose a save location. Keep the language set to Kotlin, the minimum SDK to API 24, and the build configuration language to Kotlin DSL. Click Finish, and after a few moments, the editor will open up. Keep in mind that all the code that I add throughout the course of the video can be found inside the learning path linked below. In the left pane, expand Gradle scripts and open the build.gradle.kts file that has module app next to it in parentheses. This is where we'll add OpenCV support. Scroll down to the bottom and inside Dependencies, add the implementation line specifying release 4.10.0, the latest version at the time of this recording. Next, in the left pane, expand App, Res, Layout, and open ActivityMain.xml. Click the Code button at the top right to edit the XML layout. Here we are replacing everything with a single text view element inside a linear layout tag. Also under app, expand Kotlin plus Java, com.example.arm64 open CV camera, the one without any items in parentheses next to it, and open mainactivity.kt. Replace everything with what is seen on the screen, which again, you can find in the learning path linked below. The package com.example.arm64 open CV camera uniquely identifies the application. The imports include Android OS Bundle for passing data between activities, Android Widget Text View for the text view element that displays text on the screen, Android X Activity Enable Edge to Edge for enabling edge to edge display, Android X App Compat, App, App Compat Activity as the base class for activities, Org OpenCV Android OpenCV Loader for initializing OpenCV. Main activity is the entry point of the app and it extends app compatibility, providing support for older Android versions. It starts by declaring a text view variable named text view status and a boolean variable named is open CV initialized to track the open CV initialization status. The onCreate method initializes the activity. Super onCreate saved instance state calls the parent class's onCreate method for default initialization. Enable edge to edge makes the UI extend to the screen edges. Set content view R layout activity main sets the layout from activity main.xml. Text view status is assigned the result of find view by ID, R ID text view status by finding the text view with the ID text view status in the layout. Is OpenCV initialized is assigned the result of OpenCV loader init local which attempts to initialize OpenCV and returns a value. 
Finally, the update controls method updates the text view element's text based on the OpenCV initialization status. Now, run the code in the simulator by pressing the play button at the top of the screen. If everything works correctly, you should see the text OpenCV initialized. Go ahead and click the red stop button at the top. To select a different phone simulator not included in the drop down menu, click the main menu button at the top left, go to Tools, and select Device Manager. Click the plus icon to create a new virtual device. You can select a default profile or create or import a new hardware profile. For this exercise, I'll choose a Pixel 7a. Click Next, keep the default API 35. Click Next again, name the device or leave it as default, select the startup orientation, and click Finish. It will now be available in the drop-down menu, and everything should run the same as before. Next, we'll add camera support using OpenCV and the on-screen controls whose functionality we'll implement later in the video. Open Activity Main XML again and add two button elements, one labeled Start and one labeled Stop, in their own linear layout tag, a checkbox element labeled Enable Processing, an OpenCV Java Camera View element, and an Image element. The Java Camera View element links the Android camera to OpenCV. You can see the button and checkbox elements when we press Run. To use the camera, we need to request access from the user. Expand App Manifests and open Android Manifest.xml. Directly above the application tag, add a uses permission tag for camera access and a uses feature tag for the camera hardware. Go back to mainactivity.kt and add the manifest, package manager, activity compat, and context compat imports. Android manifest provides constants for various permissions required by the app, such as the camera. Android content PM package manager provides information about installed packages. Android X Core App Activity Compact contains methods for accessing activity features like requesting permissions. Android X Core Content Context Compact contains utility methods for accessing context features like checking permissions. Above the onCreate method, add a camera permission request code variable with a value of 100. The value is arbitrary and could be any number. We're just using it to identify the camera permission request. In the onCreate method, below the isOpenCVInitialized variable assignment, we'll add the code to check if the camera permission is granted, and if not, request it. ContextCompat.CheckSelf permission checks if the app has the specified manifest permission camera permission. It returns PackageManager.Permission granted if it does, and PackageManager.Permission denied if it doesn't. Activity Compat Request Permissions requests the specified permissions, in this case the camera, and identifies the request with our request code. Run the application again, and the simulator should prompt for the camera access permission. Next, we'll add the logic to control the camera. Add the Camera Bridge View Base button, checkbox, image view, CV type, and mat imports. Most are self explanatory, but Camera Bridge View Base interfaces with the camera in OpenCV, and CV type and mat work with OpenCV types and matrices. Extend the main activity class to implement Camera Bridge View Base .cv Camera View Listener 2, which provides callback functions for camera events. At the top of the class, add variables for button start preview, button stop preview, checkbox processing, image view, OpenCV camera view, and is preview active. In the onCreate method, under the set content view call, initialize these variables except for is preview active by finding their IDs in activity main.xml. Set the OpenCV camera view index to zero to indicate the default back camera and set it to use the current activity as the camera view listener with set CV camera view listener. Add click listeners to the buttons. The start button will enable the camera view if the camera permission is granted and the stop button will disable the camera view. Update the update controls method to adjust the UI based on the OpenCV initialization status and preview activity status. 
enabling or disabling the start and stop buttons accordingly. Add three overrides, on camera view started, on camera view stopped, and on camera frame to implement camera bridge view base dot CV camera view listener two. On camera view started sets is preview active to true and updates the controls. On camera view stopped, as can be expected, sets is preview active to false and then updates the controls. On camera frame converts the input frame to RGBA format and returns it. This is where we'll later add frame processing. Run the application, press start and observe the green camera icon indicating the app is accessing the camera. Now let's modify what we've built so far to display images from our camera in the image view. Import bitmap and utils. Bitmap is used for creating and manipulating bitmap images, and org OpenCV Android Utils provides utility functions for converting between OpenCV's mat objects and Android's bitmap objects. Under the OpenCV camera view variable, add a mat variable named input mat to store the camera frame data in the OpenCV format. Initialize input mat in the on camera view started method to match the camera frame dimensions using CV8UC4, which is an 8-bit unsigned 4-channel matrix in RGBA format. In the on-camera view stopped method, release input mat to free up resources. Update on-camera frame to display the camera feed inside the app. Convert the input frame to the RGBA format and copy it to input map. Create a bitmap object named bitmap to display with the same dimensions as input mat and with an ARGB8888 configuration, which is a 32-bit color with alpha channel. Use utils.mat to bitmap to convert input mat to bitmap to display. Update the image view with the new bitmap using run on UI thread for thread safety, then return input mat. To test our application on an actual device, follow the steps at developer.android.com slash studio slash run slash device. I'll briefly walk you through the steps required to run the app on an Android phone connected to a Windows 11 computer via USB. Click the link to install OEM USB drivers, find your device manufacturer, and follow the instructions. For instance, I'm testing on a Samsung Galaxy S20, so I'll install the Samsung driver. I'd recommend restarting your computer after doing this. Enable developer options and USB debugging on your phone. Find your phone's build number and settings, tap it seven times, and enable USB debugging in developer options. Connect your smartphone to the computer with a USB cable. It should now appear as an option in the drop down menu near the virtual devices. Press run to run the app on the phone. You should see the camera activate when you press start and remain at the last active frame when you press stop. For our final update, we'll add functionality to use OpenCV to apply additional processing to the images, in which we'll convert it to grayscale and apply adaptive thresholding. Import org.opencv.imageproc.imageproc .imageproc for image processing functions like color conversions and thresholding. Add a mat variable named processMat to store processed image data. Initialize it in on camera view started with a single channel grayscale format CV8UC1 and release it in on camera view stopped. Update on camera frame to process the frames. Create a variable named mat to display with the initial value of input mat. If the checkbox is ticked, use imageproc.cvtcolor to convert input mat to grayscale and store it in processed mat. Apply adaptive thresholding to process mat using imageproc.adaptive threshold, then assign the value of mat to display to processed mat. Modify bitmap to display to use mat to display instead of input mat, and update utils.mat to bitmap accordingly. Run the app and check enable processing to see the final result. As mentioned at the beginning, this learning path is a great starting point for learning OpenCV. You should now be familiar with OpenCV basics, how to integrate it into an Android project, access and use a device's camera, and apply image processing. For further learning, check out David Brisky's follow-up learning path on face detection with OpenCV on Android devices. 
Explore more learning paths for a variety of topics at learn.arm.com. If you're interested in creating your own learning path, collaborate with the ARM community by clicking the Create button to find out how. Thanks for watching. Sign up for our developer program at arm.com slash developer program and join our Discord community with the invite included in your sign up email. Later.